Thank you. I am calling to order the Monday, February 13th meeting of the Finance Committee. Uh, just a reminder for everyone, this is being audio and video recorded. Please do not share your screen with the idea that anything you do may be captured on the recording. May I have an approval of the agenda? So moved. Second. Second. Thank you. Uh, Stephen? Aye. Chris? Aye. Joe? Aye. Peter? Aye. Jeremy? Aye. Jill? Jill. Okay, Denise, aye. Um, I am now going to open it for public comment. And I'm going to close it for public comment. Okay, so today we are doing review discussion and potential adoption of the motion for the following town meeting warrant articles, starting with article 87. Select board, home rule petition, real estate conveyance, 50 Alter Rock Road to Nantucket Conservation Foundation, Inc. And Ken, I believe it's over to you, sir. Ken? Yep, couldn't find him on you. Found it. <laughs> Welcome, Ken. Thank you for being here. Okay. Article um, 87, please, Ken. 87 is is the article. Well, this this is part of the transaction with respect to sheep pond, uh, and what we're doing is conveying to the uh, uh, Nantucket Conservation Foundation uh, the parcel that we own because they're better equipped to be able to take a look at it. What happened was is that we set this up last year. Uh, the uh, back with some changes. Vicki Morris made the changes. This language incorporates the changes if they want. Therefore, I ask that you uh, approve this and forward this on for filing with the, uh, uh, for, to, to be approved up in Boston. Thank you, Ken. Any questions for Ken? Anyone online have questions? Seeing no hands raised, may I have? Well, yeah, I, okay. I, I guess I do. What's, what, what's, Remind me what the other side of this transaction is, please. This is part of the transaction that we're dealing with creating the road from the conservation on land from the Conservation Foundation in the sheep pond area. The road has wiped, washed out. And we need to find a new internal road with respect to providing access to all of the people uh, in the sheep pond area. And what we have done is what we, we're gonna end up not having the town have any roads out there uh, we, what we're going to do is what we did the last time when there was an erosion, we were going to provide uh, space for people to, uh, but the space have to access on the road to be able to get to their properties uh, to maintain them. The town will not have any obligation with roads uh, as far as to the extent that I can get rid of all the roads that we have out there. And how big is that lot? Um, Hang on, I have a map. One inch is 300 feet, so about an inch and a quarter by an inch. And it's, it's Andrew here, it's five acres. Five acres, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. So this sounds like a benefit to the town that we don't have to be the steward over Alter Rock. Um, but just thinking in the future, when we don't have any more Alter Rocks to trade, what do we do when we need to? Well, but but all, remember, Alter Rock was, was needed to needed to uh, not to be used for anything other than conservation and and open space. So it couldn't right. be used for, for us to build on anything. So uh, and and the thing is, is that when you're trading property that is so designated, it has to go to another entity. Yeah, I, I'm not suggesting that it has a lot of value. I, I guess what I'm suggesting is that there might be a situation in the future where you don't have a property like this to balance a transaction where we need to create a road. You know, there's erosion happening all the time in all parts of the island. So do we do we keep these parcels and we don't give them to Conservation Foundation uh, as a matter of course so that we have them for this sort of horse trading? Or, or is it really not necessary to make that sort of swell? Well, the fact of the matter is, is Steve, that, that what you would have to be, this could only go to another organization that has the same kind of restrictions 
with respect to being a, an Article 97 type of, of, of entity. So yeah, um, that's 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 not the question, Ken. I understand that it could only go to a certain type of organization. My question is, do you even need to make a trade, or what happens if we don't have something to trade in the future? Well, what but, if the but, land is held by the the, the Madikit Conservation Association in the Cheap Pond area? Madikit Conservation Association doesn't want anything to do with Alter Rock. So what would we do in that instance? Well, but the fact is, is that we have to provide access and road into Sheep Pond. This is part of the deal that we, we negotiated with respect to getting that significant piece of property from the Conservation Foundation that in fact could be able to create a road to provide access to the, to the homes there to do. So Ken, if I understand you correctly, this is already in flight and we can't renege on it now. I'm not suggesting that we do. In the no, future. No, I'm just, I'm if, just yeah. to, to right. the circle from Ken's. Do, do you answer your question, Denise, is yes. <laughs> and so, Andrew? Um, let me try on that. I think without having a piece of land available where there's an opportunity to trade, we would have to appropriate a damage award and do a taking. Got it. And it would be more difficult, especially when you take dedicated open land to, you know, to convert into roads. So we would have a problem probably with the state. If we couldn't find mitigation land, we would have to make a payment. You have to, to make a payment well. to to the state because they hold the conservation restriction or why, it's, why to them? It's what's called Article 97 of the state constitution. When you convert land dedicated to open already dedicated to open space, you can't change it to anything else without mitigation. So your mitigation options are basically finding an equivalent area in terms of value and size, or, and this is kind of what uh, the water company has been struggling with. Um, they haven't been able to find like replacement land, so they would have to make some sort of a payment in mitigation for the open space lost. Cut it. Okay, thank you. Does that cover your question? Yeah. And how do you, how do you value a property like that though? That really has no use other than the fact of what it is. So you take you kind of take a theoretical value. What would it be worth if it was buildable, right? Because I mean, a property like this, oh, no yeah. value and everything. What would it be like? What would it be like? Uh, if it was not restricted, that would give you the cost of what you'd have to go find, right? So you would have to do an equivalent area, or a, you can't go underneath the area that you're taking away, and you can't go under the value. So the value on this would be quite high, so you would end up having to do much more area to make up for it. Uh, <laughs> Any other questions? No, okay. Um, may I have a motion? Are we approving? Yeah. Yes. yes. Are we adopt, adopting? Yes. Second. Okay. Any discussion on the motion? Okay. Seeing none. Stephen? Aye. Chris? Aye. Joe? Aye. Peter? Aye. Jill? Aye. And Jeremy? Aye. Thank you. Okay. Ken, Article 88, Home Rule Petition, Real Estate Conveyance, a portion of Ames Avenue. Okay, uh, this is a similar type of situation. Ames Avenue is a small portion out, uh, uh, out in Madikit. And what we're trying to do here, in fact, is fix what we tried to do a number of years ago where we had an obligation to transfer this, this land to uh, the, the people that, that, that bought it. But the problem is, is that, that this is, again, a conservation, a section of it is a conservation. And so what this article does is it, it provides for the opportunity to be able to provide an exchange of land in order to be able to complete the original transaction of the sale of the property on Ames Avenue. Uh, it's been hanging around for five, six, seven, eight years. And we finally got to the point where I think uh, that everybody has agreed that this will work. And, and this is the right thing to do to, to uh, settle up our obligation out in that part of the island. And I'd be happy to have Andrew and Sandy other facts that I missed. Any questions or comments? Seeing none. And it was also, you see in the warrant, it was approved in Article 95 last year. 
So it's really to extend the approval because it's pending in front of the legislature. The, the, again, the, the minor changes to the language are what the, what the legislature wanted after, after reviewing it, similar to what happened in the previous one. Okay. Seeing no questions or comments, I'm going to ask for a motion. Motion to adopt. Thank you. Second. Thank you. Any discussion on the motion? Okay, Stephen? Aye. Chris? Aye. Joe? Aye. Peter? Aye. Uh, Jill? Aye. Jeremy? Aye. Denise, aye. Motion to adopt. Thank you. Okay. Article 90, Home Rule Petition, Real Estate Conveyances from the Town of Nantucket to Nantucket Islands Land Bank. Andrew, do you want to speak to this one? Yeah, sure. Andrew, do you want to just come up to the table, seeing as, you know, there's yeah, not, there's not a, actually a... I don't a, want to... You know, people aren't fighting for seats here, Andrew. Okay, well, all right. All right. Did you see the guy last time. Okay. <laughs> okay. He left one of his shoes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bloody. So these, there's a series of articles that are all that all have a similar uh, interrelation here, and this is land on the creeks, basically. Um, the intent of this article of these articles, so it's 90, 91, 94, um, 97, 90, 95, and 97, and 97 are all interrelated. So. What is happening here? So under Article 90, this is a home rule petition allowing the transfer of land that's already been dedicated to open space to the land bank for use as open space, okay? So why, why that's required is this Article 97 under the state constitution says, if you change the um, custodian of open space land, you have to get permission. Okay. Okay, so that's what we're doing here. and. The overall feeling is that the land bank will be a better steward of this land, which is, you can see the areas in green are already controlled by the land bank. So having sort of this entire area under one management is uh, actually helpful. Uh, this is the um, actual home rule petition article, the, the later article that authorizes the transfer allows the town to reserve any easements or other things that they might want to keep before it's conveyed. And nothing forces this to be done, by the way. It's all, what this does is it clears away hurdles so it can be done, especially when there's, you know, opportunities to do so. So this won't actually affect the transfer, make the transfer happen. This is to permit if, as and when the transfer should happen, it can. Correct without further delays, basically. And it's supposed to be on Article 97, everybody, it's supposed to be 19 East Creek Road, not nine. I'm sure the people at nine would be interested to know that <laughs> oh, we just oops. transferred. Yeah. So, just one point. Is there any risk over time? Nah. Yes, please, is, is, is there any risk over time that the land may become not the best steward for properties we can do you load them up with? I mean, I get why it totally makes sense now. Yeah. Um, well, they're all they're all elected, number one. So you know, you kind of get to review. If you don't like what they're doing. There's a way to change it. And in their legislation, if they ever go out of business, all their assets and everything come back to the town. They go to the town. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks. So, other questions for Andrew or Ken? No, then do we want a motion for all of them? Yeah. This was the sure. specialty. I have a question, Denise. Okay, Jill. I wasn't, I, my reactions don't seem to work here. So, oh, they just started working. Um, do we know when the transfer will take place? And do we know if Land Bank has any, you know, plans to, to do something with it? Uh, I think Jesse is on. Is oh. Jesse on? I'm oh, sorry. Yes, I am. I was trying to figure out how to raise my hand. I don't know how. <laughs> um, first of all, I just want to say I think I was wrong, Denise, about that later article. It actually is nine East Creek. Um, that was I, I got confused because our project's at 19, but okay. um, not nine is our island home site, and that's the one that we will be seeking the easement for. So okay. it's actually it's it's correct. Um, okay. 
And then I actually had a question and I'll, um, I'll answer Jill's question, but Andrew, is the Kansu bike path supposed to be in this map or is that a different article? That's a different article because that's not protected open space. So that's covered in a different article. Okay. The, the, um, this map shows protected open land. Yep. So I don't, some of you may know that we have a project in planning right now um, on the creeks in front of our island home. It's like a viewing deck and um, we're going to be uh, designing so that the dock that's there will be made to be accessible. Um, and then we also are working on a project at, um, oh, the, the looking at the whole of Washington Street, a larger, broader framework plan, but so that we can focus specifically on the corner of Francis and Washington. Um, that's our immediate study area. And then um, we own most of Kansu, so the same design team, Scape and Woods Hole Group, are working on all three of these projects at 19 East Creek, at Kansu, and also at Washington Street. So we're really starting to be able to look at um, how all these you know, sites can work together over the long term um, and sort of create some form of green infrastructure along the shoreline that will hopefully protect, you know, a good amount of the developed area behind it. Jill, I forgot what your question was. Sorry. <laughs> I just I've asked Jesse what they plan to do with it and when they plan to take ownership or stewardship, I should say. Thank you, Jill. Just, uh, yes, um, but Jesse, if you could answer the second part of Jill's question, and then Chris has a question. Uh, what was the second part of the question? Sorry. <laughs> uh, when when is the oh. land bank intending to take stewardship of this property? Um, whenever the t I mean, it would it would be great to know that. Um, so I, I guess if it passes town meeting, we would just work to you know as soon as the documents could get. I guess drafted and and it could happen, um, but it would be great to know that it would it it's it would be coming to us because then we could include it. One of the things that we're sort of exploring is this idea that has been tossed around for a long time that harbor walk idea. You know, looking at could it, what what those options might be, and this might help. Um, you know, uh, create that option uh, or make it make it possible to do that. Uh, Chris and then Andrew. Okay. Um, I was just curious whether these properties have any of the kind of read control work that was done at Makansu Springs area in the plan. No. No. So we actually did treat the town properties as well as land bank properties um, in that Fragmites project um, already. Um, Which is some of these properties here. Yeah, the ones that are in red um, at uh, Kansu. Okay. okay, thanks. Andrew? I just wanted to add one thing that, you know, these home rule petitions take time to get go through the legislature too. So it's not, you know, just because we voted at town meeting, then it goes to the legislature. Sometimes they've gone through remarkably quickly. Other times it takes a couple of years. Okay. So anyway, um, you know, we want to get it to them as soon as possible as well. But it certainly doesn't help to wait because of the timing. Okay, so. thank you. Any other questions? In which case, can I make a motion to adopt 1991, 95, and 97? You may. Second. Could could I ask one little favor? Of course. I don't have all the. There's some minor description corrections. If we could work into your motion, I don't have those all detailed right now, but I will get them to you. Okay. If you, if, I could offer so, a friendly amendment. <laughs> so it'd be, let me just do yeah, so like, 91, on two of them, right? 95, 97, and 90 was the other one, right? So would the motion be to adopt 90, 91, 95, 97 with the soon to be forthcoming amendments from Andrew Vorse? Yeah, they're, they're just minor, they're minor descriptive. That, that'll be my, my motion. Excellent. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> Stephen? Aye. Chris? Aye. Joe? Aye. Peter? Aye. Jill? Aye. Jeremy? Aye. Thank you. Okay. And then Andrew, just send those to me and Maria Thank once you, very you much. have them. Thank, Thank you.
Okay. Give me one second. That was four, right? 90, was... 91, 95, 97? Correct. All right. Uh, Article 93, real estate conveyance, utility easement at Wilkes Square. Ken? Uh, I think I'll have Andrew do that one as well. Okay, great. Andrew? Okay, if we could pull that. Oh, thank you, the map. So this uh, area is, believe it or not, uh, part of a private way that exists between the two streets there. Mm -hmm. So this is showing an area that goes to the center line of that private way. Um, and it would authorize the um, easements for um, N-Grid and um, to be located in that area, which may be there already. I'm not sure, but um, that's what this is about. Is that where the bus station is? Yes, exactly. On the other side, uh, just above it on the screen. Right. 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 The lip, now the town owns that um, that parcel, and then the little triangle in the middle, which is the Wilkes Square Monument, is owned by the town as well. So okay. the private way essentially is you now closed, but yeah. Okay. Any other questions? No. How does this come about? Is this something that NGRID requests of us, or how do how do we end up with this? Yeah, they they uh, requested that they needed an actual easement. Okay, thanks. Yep. Okay. Seeing no, Peter. Any no. questions? No. no. I have a motion. Motion to adopt. I have a second. Second. Thank you, Stephen. Aye. Chris. Aye. Joe. Aye. Peter. Aye. Jeremy. Aye. Jill. Aye. Thank you, Denise. Aye. Motion to adopt. Okay. 94, real estate acquisition, Paper Streets, Goose Pond Lane, and portion of Spruce Street. This is what Jesse was talking about. This is part of the property that we're working to, together with them in terms of being able to get that. I'd be the area behind our island home and Spruce Street in order to be able to have access to the new dock that they're going to be creating over there. Uh, uh, I think that, that if, if I'm correct, uh, Jesse, uh, this is an important part of, of what we were talking about in terms of the fixing the access to that to that entire. Yeah. 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 This space. Go ahead. I just wanted to add that both of these properties are considered owners unknown, and that's why they're here to be acquired. Okay. Um, they're they're part of the old creeks, and they were never properly like set out. Um, the the longer one that sort of runs alongside was uh, an easement laid out in 1965 to be part of Spruce Street, which of course has never been built. So. Okay. So that's marine in front of it. Yeah. Yes, okay. and on the left side. Yeah. yeah. So there were actually plans to, to lay a road behind Marine Hardware, and yep, just build a bulkhead, fill it in, no problem. It's 1965. <laughs> yeah, good for delivery. Yeah. 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 Wow. As, as a practical, matter, so those are condos or homes or something that are down that get access through Marine Home Center, right? Yeah. And as a practical matter, are they using that as kind of? A, is there anything going on in that? The, the little yellow, see where the, the yellow spruce tree, yeah, that's nice. where it kind of peters out. Yeah, the they, they drive through. Yeah, no, that is the paint department. I was just wondering if they were using this oh, anyway. I think like they're not. Maybe they're going to kayak pulled up. There yeah, there's, there, there's a couple of footpaths where they put boats. Now, not that I, this had anything to do with it, I'm sure, but one of them actually derived frontage from that road. <laughs> oh, that one, that little one in the middle. I wondered how that happened. Oh, sure. Which would not qualify under any yeah. way. <laughs> Thank you. Jesse, did you want to add anything? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, anything, I mean, this, this allows us to explore some connectivity concepts, but any, in my brief foray into this, I'm realizing there's about, um, you know, a million permits that you need, but, but that's okay. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll still keep exploring and um, maybe by the time I retire, something will happen. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, any other questions or so, comments? So the town's acquiring this from no one, from no one, essentially. There'll be a taking. But if, if there is actual owners, they could come forward and say, I'd like my damage award, please, um, which I believe the land bank has offered to cover any of those costs should 
anybody arise now come forward. I don't anticipate a lot of um, value for these properties, but you never know. Thank you. How do, how do you end up with properties with no owner? Well, I mean, this 1960 isn't exactly like 1842. Yeah. It's, you know, but people die with no heirs. Some of the property, remember, it was uh, it was set off by proprietors. So in some cases, it was never set off. Or people are, you know, it was set off so long ago you can't identify them. So not that there's been a huge title search on this yet, but before the taking, there will be. But I can tell you that most of this land was taken from unknown owners. So it was considered not valuable and, you know, yeah. Okay, I have a motion. Motion to adopt. Second. Second. Thank Second. you. Any discussion on the motion? Okay, Stephen. Aye. Chris. Aye. Joe. Aye. Peter. Aye. Jill. Aye. Jeremy. Aye. Denise, I thank you. Okay. 96, uh, real Eric, estate acquisition. Easements. Uh, Eric and Greg, Greg and I have been working to try and get voluntary easements with respect to solving the problem of uh, an easement for, for the, the water lines that are going to go across the road to the edge of the properties on both sides of the road, solve the, uh, the issue with respect to. Uh, and the water there. Uh, and uh, it was felt that because of the fact that uh, A, the state wants us to move this forward more quickly, and B, to resolve the issue with some takings that were not done necessarily the best way, I'll put it that way, by the airport. Uh, this is a, a motion to, in fact, allow us to uh, achieve these easements. Have it to, in fact, put a connection on the uh, owner's property, uh, a temporary easement to be able to go onto his property to put the connection there, all that's necessary, because uh, anything from the connection, which is next to the road, to the house itself is the responsibility of the owners. We have no responsibility with respect to it. And that's the way that was determined by outside town council in terms of being able to get this done. The time frame that uh, suits uh, this project forward. Questions? So these easements are in the to, to put the water main in the road as well as to put well, the connection. We, we have the right to put the water main in the road. But the fact is, okay. we have to have the easement to be able to to take the line that that's in the road to, onto their property. That's what we're looking for. Okay. Got it. Thanks, Ken. Okay. Motion to adopt. Second. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none. Stephen? Aye. Chris? Aye. Joe? Aye. Peter? Aye. Jill? Hi. Jill? Uh, Thank you. Uh, yeah. Aye. <laughs> Thank you. Jeremy? Aye. Thank you. Denise? Aye. Okay. 98, uh, Real Estate Acquisition, Mayflower Circle, and Daffodil Lane. I'm going to turn that over to Andrew. And 99, the conveyance. Yes, Might as well do both together. Please, Andrew. Right. So this is a paired, essentially, um, what has become a paper street. Um, Mayflower Circle is, you can see where that yellow uh, area is. Yeah. So Mayflower Circle is actually no longer a circle. It is now sort of enveloped into the Richmond property. So the part that we're talking about is only the section that runs between the two properties at the end. Um, yeah. so, that would be handy. So essentially, May, this part of Mayflower Circle is already gone. So all we're talking about is the part that's here, okay. cutting these properties. So there's no reason to keep that road any longer. It just It's really used as a driveway to those homes. So this article basically would allow us to put, to buy out the fee and then offer that to the uh, budding property owners through the yard sale program. And do abutting property owners ever say no thank you? Uh, it's very rare that ha that happens. Very, like, almost never. Yeah. So 
No, I was just curious. Well, then they have to have an easement from their neighbor or something to get into the drop their house, right? Right, and there would be again if it's as long as the, if they're going to use the existing road, there would be a cross easement conveyed with with the actual underlying land, right? Okay. Questions? Is this non-circle going to be known as Mayflower Circle forever? No. Alas, that name will go away. <laughs> it's going to be Mayflower be somewhere or, court, but, or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mayflower rectangle. Come becomes just a driveway. Mm -hmm. But 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 like their addresses are Mayflower one and two Mayflower Circle. So what do they become? Well, they could, I suppose, keep it if they wanted to. Um, okay. But you're right. Technically, they be, they become part of Daff or is that Daffodil or no. oh, Evergreen? Oh. I'm sorry. So yeah. the, this road, the road that's evergreen, and so they could be cut, have addresses on. We'll evergreen leave it to the well. assessor to figure that out. Yes. Yeah. Good. <laughs> you know, a front door address and a rear door address. <laughs> okay. And any other questions? May I have a motion? Motion to adopt. And present Peter for ninety-eight and ninety-nine. Yes. Yeah, okay. Know. Thank you. Um, Second. Thank you. <laughs> We're getting there. Stephen, aye. Chris, aye. Joe, aye. Peter, aye. Jill, aye. Jeremy, aye. Thank you. That's okay. Ninety-eight, and ninety-nine, one hundred. Real 100, estate acquisition, Dartmouth Lane. One hundred deals with a problem that was created when there was a mistake made in the <laughs> taking order of taking that was filed in twenty fourteen, uh, and. What this does is it back the seeks to correct that mistake with, by providing the right to pass and repass over Darth, Dartmouth Lane in the driveways that are located on parcels A and F as shown on the plan. So that the people, in fact, who want the properties can legally get in and out of their properties. Okay. Questions? Yeah, what? Okay, can you give us some of the background? Um, I mean, what happened? I understand there was a problem and this corrects it, but what was the problem? Whose fault well, was well, it? When, when, they, when they filed the order of taking in, in 2014, they, they, they didn't file it correctly with respect to the right to pass and repass. Oh, who are we talking a about? A section of Dartmouth Lane, and that's what we're fixing. Yeah, the town. Yep. Got it. Okay, well, we better clean up our own mess then. <laughs> yep. Any other questions? They've only been waiting nine years for this to be fixed. Okay. May I have a motion? Any others? <laughs> motion, motion to adopt. Second. Uh, Stephen. Aye. Chris. Aye. Joe. Aye. Peter. Aye. Jer Jeremy. Aye. Jill. Aye. Thank you. Denise, aye. Okay. Stone Alley. Okay. Stone Alley is, is uh, I, I, I want to give Andrew a lot of credit for this in terms of helping me come up with a solution to it. Um, Stone Alley, uh, there was never clear as to who owned what on it. Uh, and what was happening is, is that the people that owned on either side of it were taking the position that they were owning to the middle of it, therefore to prevent uh, access up or down Stone Alley. So basically what we decided to do was to in fact uh, do, to have us acquire a non-exclusive easement in all or a portion of Stone Alley for pedestrian and bicycle access, sidewalk purposes, and for repairs to a way between the western sideline of Union Street to the eastern sideline of Orange Street as shown on the map. Uh, what that does is it gives us the ability to have access to it, to have people go through it, and but, it, but even better, it leaves the obligation to maintain the rest of it to the people who own along the side of it. So, I think we created a real win-win here in terms of the fact that we have the easement, but we don't have the responsibility to take care of it. And we also, with respect to it, avoid the obligation of being an owner of the property that could be subject to liability for when we have falls and other things that happen. Is it, is it a private street or is it a public street? It's a private. It is a private street. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it'd be the same as any other private street at this point. Yeah. Right. If I could just add, so originally the right of way committee looked at this and considered making it a public way. That was sort of the first idea. The issue was, though, if you're, you're probably all familiar with this, there's quite a surface, you know, mm -hmm. a historically important surface that comes up from the lower part of it, um, which wouldn't meet 
handicapped accessibility standards and other things. So it becoming a public road was really sort of going to be harmful for it. So the easement allows ensures that there will be continue to be public access back and forth and make sure there's no further encroachments into it because there was a concern about that. So Thanks. we still will be able to go in and do some, you know, for example, if we wanted to apply for CPC funds, say for the historic part, mm -hmm. because we have the easement, we would be able to be eligible for that. And as a town, we're all, already enforcing issues at the bottom of it where one of the neighbors has in fact sort of put uh, uh, and, and wooden boxes out there by and and therefore blocking the access to his neighbor's driveway to be able to get oil delivery. So uh, it's been an interesting thing from the uh, 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 yeah. as well. Chris? Is, is this solution can, um, is, is this going to be an issue with the neighbors? Are they going? Is this contentious? Not. I'm not aware of anybody. The people that we've talked to. That I've talked to, we're really very happy with it. I, Does that include the neighbors? <laughs> <laughs> there are several neighbors that I think that recognize the historical importance of it, and they want to see it protected. I'm not sure if the ones with the boxes in the road are going to be thrilled with it, but they're, you know, right. The people who purchased their house 18 months ago, maybe somebody forgot to tell them about it. So who maintains it? It's privately maintained. So if the historic part needs to be repaired, it would, it would, the owners on both sides of that really that own to the center line, it's really their, quote, their property. It's but, expensive stuff. It's, yeah. And they're not really motivated to do that. <laughs> Again, if someone fell and, you know, liability wise, you have to address those things. But that's there's concern that that might lead to it being closed because of the it's also got a lot of ivy and it's not like the smooth yeah. <laughs> the best walking service i mean it's beautiful and you know scenic but uh as a pathway not maybe not the best have we done these before takings for easements in certain instances yes and you can actually lay out footpaths and stuff most of our all of our one big beach easements that go down to the water are all laid out easements so um and i will tell you we rarely do any fee takings for roads anymore but basically there's a lot of cost especially if registered lands involved so usually we do permanent easements now for all takings Any other questions? Uh, somewhat unrelated, but as long as we're looking at this map, was there ever any public rights in what was known as the, the Indian Trail? Yeah, I've heard that before, but I've never seen any. Um, um, like right, right behind this row of houses on Orange Street, sort of on the edge of Oh. Quantity Hill used to yeah. be able to walk through there. And, and when I say we used to, like none of us could, it was, I mean, maybe everyone would hear be very young if he ever did it. But um, but it's it's long since gone. I just wonder if that ever, you know, maybe it was just the neighbors liked the idea and they thought it was cool to see people walking on it, or if maybe there was actually some easement or right away. I, I at one point I did look at a few I didn't look at all of them but I looked at a few titles on there that are registered that's where you would find it if there mm -hmm. was anything and I did not find anything I know that I think it's by sort of traditional but permission not, and yeah yeah not like for example the the Bluff Hawkins Bluff concert, where there's which is real yeah deeded rights et cetera et cetera mm -hmm. okay. okay. Any other questions or comments? No. In which case, may I have a motion? Motion to adopt. Second? Second. Uh, Stephen? Aye. Chris? Aye. Joe? Aye. Peter? Aye. Jill? Aye. Jeremy? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Um, 102 and 103 we'll do together. And uh, up to Ken, Ken or Andrew as to who's doing it. Ken, do you want me to start? Uh, yeah, please do. So this article has been before you in the past. Um, this is a property that um, 
we think is very important for the future of travel and access and lots of things that occur at this corner. Um, since the last town meeting, and I think this got a little bit confused where we had a big debate at last year's town meeting about eminent domain, and it really wasn't about that because your motion didn't include that, which I think was fair at the time, so that there would be negotiation and discussion between the parties. So in the year that has passed, there has been uh, quite a bit of, I would call due diligence on the part of the land bank. And I don't, we can't get into a lot of that because that's some sensitive negotiations here. Um, there's also been some investigation into the viability of the building that sits there. Um, there was a public application that went to the HDC for demolition of that structure. And there was quite a lot in that filing, which never went through to an actual de decision that talks about the non-viability of that existing building, that there is a number of major problems with it that will require complete rebuilding, if not demolition and reconstruction. Um, this is a project that the land bank has done some great uh, planning on access with our consultation. Um, there's an opportunity to make the road access into the Steamship Authority better and function better. Um, we've had discussions with them as well. So it's important for our negotiations that this article is passed. I think your motion will your final motion will probably be similar in terms of there will be a discussion about the funding that still needs to be sort of worked out here. Um, but I would hope that you wouldn't would not remove the eminent domain this time. Um, because again, it's authority to do something. It doesn't mean that it's happening. But if this property is important, um, we do need to have that authority. Um, and I, I know people don't like to talk about eminent domain, but you voted it many, many times. We wouldn't have the bike paths we have, the yard, you know, all the access to the water, the paper road sales, all of that is dependent on, again, giving the select board the authority to do it, to use it. It doesn't force them to use it, but it is a tool that I think bring, will bring about results here. So, My understanding, oh, sorry, go ahead, John. My understanding of eminent domain is not that I take your property and don't pay you for it. I pay you what is the commercial, the fair whatever, market, whatever fair market value. Correct. Correct. Okay. And there can be disagreements about that, and that's, and that's you know, can be adjudicated. That. Yeah. Okay. So, I was just going to say this. This was the article that wasn't there. Was, there were some citizens who I can't remember all it, but yes. this snowball started to roll in terms of anti-eminent domain, right? And then the whole mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. yeah. So, so that was. Um, Council for the property owner who's sort of started that. Has there been any discussion with him or with the property owner over the last year? Yes, and I can't speak to that. I know Jesse um, ha has can confirm that that did happen. Okay, um, so that that brings me to my next question, which is if we're authorizing the town to acquire it somehow, purchase eminent domain or whatever, and then potentially to transfer it to the steamship authority or to the land bank is the idea that whatever cost the town incurs to acquire the property would be recouped in the transfer to steamship or land bank yes except for per the portion that we might use for roadway purposes for, for, for whatever the town's interest is okay yep jill um hi question for andrew or well a couple of things one is how is this going to improve the that area down there? Maybe just broadly, Andrew, I'm not looking for some microscopic description, but since okay. it's a one-way street and both are one-way streets, I'm curious how it's going to improve. And then with just a general question about eminent domain or um, any negotiation we have to acquire property, does that money have to get authorized as well? Or we can, the select board can just um, authorize that funding? So the first part of that, so um, the the main 
opportunity here is to have two lanes at that intersection so that the traffic that's basically not going into the terminal and proceeding and then taking a left onto, onto Broad Street is separated out. Right now, it's very tight there. And that I think you know that that corner is very tight. And really, if that there's a possibility that we've looked at for maybe a separate entrance that's not at the same intersection. Um, there, there's some different concepts that we're looking at uh, through there. Um, the so that's the main thing about visibility and about the access in and out. Uh, the other part of this is, you know, a possible extension of the uh, docking of uh, the they call it the um, slip. The, uh, the slip and the um, the, the, the limits of the fill, right? So if the um, the dock itself were sort of extended there, and we, there's kind of that low beach area there. So if that was actually turned into an extension of the dock and that area filled, that there would be maybe some viewing areas there. There would be a segregated area for pedestrians to walk you know, outside mm -hmm. of the traffic, um, it would some more sort parking. of bring you into a nicer gateway to into the park area. So um, all of that could work together to make, you know, the, the whole overall experience a little bit better than kind of the big massive asphalt area that you walk into now in chaos. So anyway, that's the idea that uh, that's how that would, would generally work. But, and then uh, the yeah, and the funding, just to add into my question, sorry, Andrew, like the steamship, do they have, they, they're going to be the biggest benefactor of this, right? So do they, uh, do they, or does the state contribute at all to um, that taking? Yeah, the expectation is they would definitely contribute to that. And, and again, we wouldn't do any taking until, you know, all of that was, was basically agreed to. And the reason it's going through the town and not the land bank, for example, is once it goes into the land bank, it's protected open space. And now we have to go back to the legislature to, you know, say they bought it and we said we need part for the road. And then we didn't properly identify it, needed five more feet. Well, we have to go back to the legislature and get approval again. So the town is sort of the holder until all the pieces come together makes sense. How old is it? Um, the the only whole idea is to, in fact, take this block blockage out so that you can, in fact, take a look at the entire parcel that's here, including uh, the the place where the trucks go uh, up next to the yacht club. So what you yep. want to what you're going to be able to do is take a look at figuring out how to make this whole area more effective in terms of traffic flow, in terms of people flow, and in terms of where things are that people have to get to. Ken, is that a historical building? 1900. 1900. Pardon? I'm trying to find out how old the building was. There's a there's a core in the middle that's from the 1900 that looks like it may have been part of the when the train came in there was some sort of building uh, access like a, a station. <laughs> it wasn't a full station, but it was like a um, utility type building. It wasn't you know, that's significant. And then it had major additions on that go up to the, between 1920 and 1940. There's no big historical reason to maintain the building. There, the, the one use that was in this building before it became the restaurant, it's been the restaurant right. for a long time. It had uh, Tony Sarg, it was called the oh, Curiosity right. Shop, was in, in that location at one point. Um, what is left of that it was a relatively short period of time it was actually in other locations um doesn't appear that there's much left from that jeremy um i'm curious as to are we approving this so as to create a process to get control of it or is this part of an economic arm wrestle two things can be true <laughs> I, I, we are the idea behind the motion, as I understand it, and Andrew will happily correct me, is to give the town the authority to be able to enter into negotiations um, about this property. 
Okay. But what, what I remember last year at the town meeting when the group think took over and, and basically said no more eminent domain was they took away the leverage the town might have in, in, in doing a transaction. So it seemed to me this whole thing is just nothing more than a, an economic dispute that these guys are holding out. But maybe I don't understand it. And maybe some of it isn't really appropriate for okay that that's also fair <laughs> i mean I, I i think last year was i think that's correct the the um and i think your motion reflected that same unfortunately i don't think we had a correct um discussion on town meeting floor it was a discussion led by that attorney about eminent domain but they weren't reading your motion correctly your motion didn't mention eminent domain Correct. at that time so there was really no reason except for a philosophical discussion to talk about it mm -hmm. then but people were as some people do don't understand that it's your motion that controls not the original article unless somebody was saying i you know i want to go back to the original article which didn't happen so there was confusion then but yeah, I think that we all took the message from town meeting and the discussion to say that there should be ongoing uh, consultation and potential offers or and due diligence about their property, and that has been done. But if we're not serious about it, and if you, I mean, if you don't think it's important or whatever, and you and we just have to wait for an owner to make a decision, then. It may never happen. So, so, so we're effectively we're effectively asking the town to purchase this, and while retaining or still giving them the right to enforce eminent domain to purchase it. Between now and the vote on this, there could be an arm's length sale at any time. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, but this this what we're being asked to today will strengthen the town's position vis-a-vis -vis acquiring this property. That's our request. Any other questions? Motion to adopt. Uh, is that a 102 and 103? Yes. Okay, thank you. Second um, on both. Thank, thank you, Jill. Um, Stephen. Aye. Chris. Aye. Joe. Aye. Well, I was about to say Andrew. <laughs> Andrew. <laughs> Peter. Aye. Uh, Jill. Aye. Jeremy. Aye. Denise, aye. Thank you. Okay. That's the thank end you. of the, that's the end of, thank you, Jesse. That's the end of the articles for today. Um, the date of our next meeting is tomorrow at four o'clock. Joe will be chairing that and it's all the planning board. So you'll get the pleasure of Andrew again. Um, and this quick. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, and uh, any committee reports since no, that, Thursday? Not till tomorrow. Okay, and any other business? In which case we are adjourned. Thank you very much. Oh, motion to adjourn. Sorry. Second. Sorry. What do they say? The motion to adjourn. Right. Thank you. Right Stephen. All right. Chris. Aye. Joe. Aye. Peter. Hi. Jill. Hi. Jeremy. Hi. Thank you, everyone. See you tomorrow. Means I get home in a